I'm really pleased to be joined on the Crispin Flintoff Show by David Powell, an artist and political activist who has put a lot of time and research into the issue of free ports and special economic zones. Um, this isn't something that I thought uh, much, much about or knew much about, but recently people have been ringing alarm bells about it. And I really wanted to know what this is all about. What are free ports and special economic zones? Why are they a danger to us? Um, David, could you tell us why you got involved in, in looking into this issue at all? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for um, having me on the show. Um, yes, well, I, I got into, really got politicised after Brexit because I'm living in and working in Holland. I did a second study in Holland after I left London. And um, so I kept going back and forth between London and um, Amsterdam. And now I'm living in The Hague. But the reason I got politicised was because I was denied a vote, like many of my friends here also throughout the world who were denied a vote on Brexit. So we submitted our votes, you know, to our local councils in the, uh, places where we, um, you know, our parents lived and things like this. And um, we were kind of sidelined and we were told that our vote wouldn't be processed in the time, you know, before the deadline of the Brexit referendum. So we were just cut out. And I think this happened to millions of people. And so I started to wonder, well, OK, why? what is going on here? This is absolutely insane. And I was really, really angry about it. So I just started digging into what was behind um, Brexit. And the great the, the really good thing is on Twitter, you don't have to do this alone. So I, I immediately had people, you know, pointing me in the direction. And it's still two people who I work with today, a woman from London called Susan Chubb. She is on Twitter and Tartan Tuesday from Scotland. And they they kind of um, directed me towards special economic zones and free ports and private cities or charter cities. And they said, yeah, this is a phenomenon that is occurring globally. You know, it's it's going on around the world. And since um, the 2008 crash, um, we've now got over 5,400 special economic zones and thousands more came through after the, the financial crash. And you've got to start thinking, well, why is this and what does this have to do with Brexit? So first, I'd like to describe what a special economic zone and a free port are. They're basically variations on the same thing. They're about the exit from democracy. And that's where Brexit comes in. So a special economic zone and a free port, they're designated areas outside of the host country's you know, laws and regulations. So if we think back to um, Brexit and people like Jacob Rees-Mogg and his retained EU, um, REUL bill, you know, the retained EU law, uh, on December 31st, 2023, so over 600 um, EU UK laws were revoked overnight. So the three main areas were employment rights, food safety and um, environmental protections. So then um, this is perfect for the uh, special economic zone because special economic zones are basically tax havens and they allow companies to receive um, state aid, which is public money. So every single special economic zone gets, um, how much is it? 160 million of public money, which is known as state aid. So times that by 74, that's the number of special economic zones being set up right now, you've got 11 billion, 840 million pounds going to businesses. Okay, so the whole growth agenda, why, why is that a bad thing? Well, it is bad because there are 82 of these zones in the EU, but they are strictly regulated. So companies are not allowed to receive state aid um, which will just make their profits go up without contributing anything back to local communities and to public services and things like this. So that's the big difference. So what you've got now are these is 86 zones in total, 12 free ports, 74 special economic zones. That's 86 free zones being set up. They have been turbocharged since Brexit. Why were they turbocharged? Well, precisely, we get back to the state aid issue. Now, you can look on the website. I've done all the research. Um, the Institute for Government, they've got a little, maybe you've even seen this image I post quite regularly. It says um, 
that the reason for um, uh, exiting the EU was was around um, the prohibition of state aid about giving this money to companies. You can't do that in the EU. And Thatcher's uh, special economic zones, this is why they failed. They came up against the rules of the EU and state aid. So the bidding processes for the all these zones, that took place between 2021 and 2022. So that's closed. So all the deals have been done, right? right. So this is where it gets, you know, very disturbing because I think most people have not e don't even know what a special economic zone is. But what's happening is the UK is being carved up into basically corporate sovereignties so you have you have what people think of as their sovereignty we we call it collective sovereignty but when that's replaced with corporate sovereignty and especially in these zones that are carving up the country you know into different patchworks of sovereignties right this is where it gets extremely dangerous now on the government's website you can you can read quite clearly um all the kind of um all the mistakes uh, that that special economic zones through um, you know uh, came came over, and that was that was things like money laundering, um, tax evasion, um, you know, a kind of um, public services collapsing, bank uh, councils collapsing, and it's all about deregulation. It's all about ensuring that companies in the zones make as much profit as possible, and they get tax breaks for ten years inside these zones. The zone licenses I mentioned to you, the bid in that closed on twenty in twenty twenty two, the licenses are now for twenty five years. That's a quarter of a century. And the other thing that people don't know is that Labour MPs, uh, councillors, mayors, lords, and baronesses were were board members of Sunak and Liz Truss Freeports Nationwide Freeports SEZs consortia. So they signed off on these things. So I'm talking about Steve Rotherham, Andy Burnham, um, former f uh, First Minister, Welsh First Minister Mark Drakeford. He signed off on eight special economic zones and two free ports in Wales. No one knew anything about this. The public were not informed at all. You can ask your you can ask your friends, you can ask your families, you can ask you know neighbours. They 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 won't know what these things are, but they're they're incredibly dangerous, right? So this is the key oh. thing of Brexit deregulation. You know what else comes along with that? Um, so Birmingham, Birmingham has is now host to six special economic zones. Birmingham Council is technically it's been issued with an S one one four notice, which means it's technically bankrupt. Okay, so Michael Gove he put up on the government website last year um, a little a little um, extra um text on compulsory purchase orders now you can read this it's everything i'm talking about is on the government website you can it's clear as day it lists all the zones everything you know where they are is 48 zones in um, england there's 18 uh SEZs in scotland and eight in wales and two free ports in scotland two free ports in wales and eight in um england so he put he put up a little uh, text about compulsory purchase orders. Now, compulsory purchase orders apply to business, agricultural and residential properties. So back to Birmingham, um, it was in The Guardian a couple of weeks ago. Over 6000 tenants are going to be basically evicted from their homes under compulsory purchase orders. It's a mass compulsory purchase order. Now, put this into kind of perspective. There are 192 councils in uh, in England alone that are um, have worse debt ratios than Birmingham, which has already been declared bankrupt. So I think what's going to happen is there's this pattern of this pattern of um, absorbing public services, of privatizing entire regions of allowing businesses to um, self-regulate inside those zones. You see how that goes wrong with, you know, the water companies. They don't they don't give a sh They literally don't give a shit. Right. While pouring tons of shit all around our coast, all around Wales and England's coastlines. Um, so the privatization model, that is what's going to happen inside these zones. And residents have no clue about it. And I think they should. And I've been speaking at Meet public meetings, anti freeports, anti uh, SEZ um, public meetings in London, Scotland, south of England. Um, sh sh uh, one of the events was hosted by George Monbiot of The Guardian, and I was invited on there to speak. 
I mean, it's an incredible reception, but every time we do these meetings, not one MP or councillor turns up, even when they're, you know, of course they're invited, we invite them to come over, but they don't bother coming. So this is, this is like, for me, this is a huge scandal. And right. we, we learned last week, was it last week, Liverpool Labour Conference, Angela Rayner announced two new, proudly announced two new uh, investment zones in, I believe it was the uh, West Midlands and South Yorkshire. But like I said, the bidding process is closed um, on, on all zones in 2022. So she's either lying or there are indeed two new zones, but I don't understand how it could have how it could have worked because they're exactly the same zones that are mentioned on the government website. So something is going on. Now, Sunak and, um, of course, Liz Trust, they were huge fans of this kind of um, um, fragmenting the country up and carving it up into corporate sovereignties, into these zones. So um, they got their consortia together and, you know, I he immediately attacked the EU. He said, oh, but the EU has 82 um, uh, free zones. But he said ours will be different from the EU because what we can do in ours, you can't do in the EU. So he's kind of kind of sort of pointing out the difference, but not really, you know, like the Tories do, not really giving away, not showing his cards. Right. And I think when people realize there's this, you know, what they call the 22 Reeves is 22 billion black hole. And then you suddenly see the, you know, the astonishing amount of taxpayers money going in it going in the subsidies of, of state aid which is illegal in the EU um you you know you just got to start putting two and two together six days into office Rachel Reeves refused permission for the the um the National Audit Office to investigate England's 48 SEZs and uh, eight free ports so that was despite an April 2024 report by the House of Commons committee who said hang on um, something there's there's a total lack of transparency going on with they also they also uh, mentioned this in the context of Sunak's flagship uh, SEZ uh, uh, T side T side um, ignoring the Nolan principles and questions over value uh, for taxpayers money. So you know if you think of T side as the kind of template for all the other zones in the country, I think it's going to be um, rinse and repeat. And we're starting to see signs of that now, like, you know, I mentioned Birmingham and that's that's six SEZs are operating in there in Birmingham. Right. Mm. So, um, yeah, this is a big problem. So you've got you've got people, you've got companies like BlackRock and Blackstone. I mean, these are the mass, the biggest um, private equity shadow bank company. They basically run everything. And Starmer, during the run up to the campaign for the, for over a year, this is via open democracy. There were meetings with these corporations every single day for a year. And people just don't seem to um, pick up on this. They voted in Starmer, but they don't know what they've been very busy with even before they got into government. So like I say, Labour were on the boards of those SEC committees and they signed off on them. And the funny thing was, if you read, say, the parliamentary transcripts of um, um, in Wales with uh, Drakeford, who resigned in March 2024, um, he's you can read his his, uh, his his doubts. You can read his you know, he talks about the deregulatory issues with all these zones, but he went ahead and signed off. Do you know, we signed off. Um, he signed off with Sunak, obviously, but guess who was present? At that signing, it was a man called Shankar Singham. Do you know who Shankar Singham is? Shankar no. Singham has been called the brains behind Brexit. Now, that is a man who has had extraordinary access to MPs, uh, particularly Tory MPs. And he's the brains behind um, the deregulatory frameworks, which he says, once they're in place, no income incoming government can change them. And I think this is also to do with secondary legislation. It's also to do with the contracts lasting for 25 years. Um, yeah, it's terrible. Free cities and special economic zones and free ports, they're all kind of interchangeable. So in Honduras, a company called Prospera set up a private city, um, but the uh, the Supreme Court shut it down 
Why? Because it violated the population's sovereignty. You know, it's a violation of their sovereignty. The Supreme Court shut it down. But guess what? There's something called the Investor State Dispute Settlement. The World Bank in 1966 set up what we call ISDS, Investor State Dispute Settlement. That is something that is woven into um, a contract, usually in the small print. But what it means is if um, a company like Prospero, who wanted, who wanted this private city set up, um, if they object to the government and also the Supreme Court's decision to, to prohibit the building, um, they're now suing Honduras government for $11 billion, right? Uh -huh. Because they say, well, we have a 50-year license on this. You can't do this. But the, the, the ISDS is basically a secretive corporate justice court that can bypass domestic courts. Now, I think if I hope I'm right in this, but I think a lot of those... Um, what they call CPTPP deals, you know, the 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 the, the supposed formative deals or whatever um, with with um, Asia and India and um, uh, New Zealand. Well, I, I Kem, Kemi Bad Badenoch, she's um, she's still not coming clean over whether ISDS is written into those deals, right? So it's basically, you know, Britain is just allowing itself to be sold off to the highest bidder, you know, and if 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 um if things go wrong if the companies you know what they what they call their infringement to capitalize to pollute the environment all this kind of stuff um if if that contract is breached in any way they will sue the government and that's that was set up by the world bank in 1966 uh -huh. so yeah, people don't know about this. And you got to ask yourself, why don't we know about this? I mean, I'm not, I only started looking into this, you know, around 2016. So it's what, eight, eight years or so now. And it's still some, every Guardian article I read, everything that, you know, every outlet that talks about, you know, councils collapsing or public services on the brink, they're not joining up the dots. They're not linking it up to this whole turbocharge special economic zone experiment in corporate governance, right? So forget about your own sovereignty. What we refer to as collective sovereignty is people power. What it's going to be replaced with corporate governance. And the first place you do that, you have to carve up the country into zones, right? So patchworks of corporate sovereignties all over the UK. So what's right. going to happen around that? So the people who aren't in those zones, obviously, when capital starts kind of monopolizing everything, starts absorbing public services, starts selling off or, you know, buying up on the cheap uh, council assets and things. Well, the people outside those zones, you might think, ah, oh, but they're lucky, but they're not. At some point, they're going to have to totally capitulate and conform to what those companies are doing in the zones. So it, what we're looking at is the privatization of a hu of the of a whole country. Those zones will just join up. Now, the government website says that um, the problem with these zones under Thatcher, OK, there was the one of state aid, right, because of the EU's regulations on that. Well, that's gone. There was also this, um, what do you call it, this problem of capital not being put back into public services, not being put, at, put back into infrastructure. So they've basically got carte, carte blanche to just self-regulate inside the zones. And this is the book which was so important for me to join the dots between Brexit and um, um, special economic zones around the world. And this is written by Quinn Slobodian. It's called Crack Up Capitalism. It focuses entirely on special economic zones, the whole history of them, also up to Thatcher um, and Brexit. So it's fantastic reading. And that's, you know, it's like you can't just go on the... In, uh, the internet and get these things. You have to start reading books to understand what's going on in depth.